the manuscript is unusual in that it has a very long and involved and detailed depiction of the Passion of Christ. And if we see here on folios 7v and 8, on the left you see the arrest of Christ. He was taken in the Garden of Gethsemane. And uh, below Christ, who is taking his trial very patiently, we see a depiction of the fiery Saint Peter who has a knife above his head and he's about to cut off the ear of that man in mustard that's below him that's fallen down to the ground and that's a man whose name is Malchus and he was a servant to the high priest and Peter thought he could defend his savior by striking out at some of the people that have come to arrest Christ. What's interesting, too, is to notice how the artist has used light in different ways, in very interesting ways. You see how the uh, mustard cloth of Malchus is lit by the lantern that is behind his knee, and above that, the figure of Christ and some of the men who are taking him are lit from that torch that is held above his head. On the right, we have the first of the many people that Christ was taken to after his arrest. And this in and of itself is very unusual because passion depictions usually might just have Christ taken to Pilate. Everyone knows the scenes with Pilate. But here we have the first trial, and that is Christ is taken to Anas, who is a member of the Jewish Sanhedrin, the high court. And you see, the figure of Anas seated on the golden throne, and he's kind of plump, and therefore he's kind of supposed to be decadent. And that turban-like pointed hat that he wears was a signifier of his foreignness and Jewishness, as well as his sort of inherent evil. That little bit of clothing was enough that people looking at this manuscript could uh, get some of the portrayal of his character through that. It's interesting to see the portrayal of Christ. We don't see his face at all, but he's led before Anas, and we see just his back. And again, the top of his head is lit by that torch that above his head, and there's little gold highlights in his hair and at the back of the robe on the left. If we turn the page to 8 verso 9, we see, in addition to some of the condition problems that the manuscript has, and you'll see the losses of paint, and uh, that is perhaps an indication of the fervent use that Queen Claude gave this manuscript. Going back to the iconography on the left, we see Christ yet before another person. This is also part of the Sanhedrin and this figure. And the lower right of the left-hand side is the high priest, the judge Caiaphas. And it was before him in questioning that Christ claimed to be the Son of God. And Caiaphas was so indignant of that answer that he rends his clothing in anger at uh, such an audacious comment. And uh, he sends him off, as we see on the right, to be mocked. And uh, we see Christ blindfolded with people striking him and making fun of him. And this is a follow-up to his claim as being the Son of God because after blindfolding him, people would hit him and say, oh, well, now you can tell us, of course, who hit you, can't you, since you know everything. If we turn the page once again, we come to 9 verso 10. And on the left, we see Christ before yet another person, a third figure. And this is Pilate. He is the figure on the left, standing, raising his right hand, turning away from Christ, who is below him. And he has on a funny kind of tubular a cylindrical hat. He was the secular authority because the Jews, according to the legends, were so keen on having Christ put to death that they had to take him to the secular authorities because the Sanhedrin was not allowed to condemn anyone to death. So Christ is dragged before Pilate, who really doesn't want to have anything to do with the mess. And so he makes that gesture of, please get rid of him, go away take him off to Herod Antipas. And that's what we see on the right. Herod Antipas was the son of the Herod who was the king of Judea when Christ was born. He's the Herod that ordered the massacre of the innocents, for instance. And you see in the bottom margin, again, Christ very calmly, but being violently dragged by a noisy crowd before the ruler who also wants nothing to do with this particular case. And you can see the look of disdain he has on his face. 
If we turn to 11 verso 12, we have a continuation of the Passion story. On the far left, you see the figure that we saw before. That's Pilate, dressed in that distinctive tubular-shaped hat. And he is presenting Christ, who's now been crowned with thorns and scourged, to the crowd below him. And if you look at the faces of that crowd below him, you see their mouths open, shouting angrily. What has happened is that Pilate, who still wants to have nothing to do with this particular case, says that he will release either Christ or condemn him, or release or condemn Barabbas, a murderer. And the crowd below shouts, give us Barabbas, but crucify Christ. On the right-hand side, you see at the bottom the famous iconography of Pilate washing his hands of the entire event. He yields to the crowd, he washes his hands of them and of the sentence he has given, and Christ, again turning his back to us, is led off by the crowd.